In this video, you'll learn how to instantly improve the sound of your studio just by moving your monitor speakers. So keep watching. From dust to dust to one of us. Hi, Rob here from musicianonamission.com and this video is part two of a series on how to build a home studio. Today you're learning about speaker position and monitor placement. And getting the speakers in the right place in your room is really important. You need to get this right before you can even think about acoustic treatment and in many cases, speaker placement will have a bigger impact than acoustic treatment and it's free. All you need is a tape measure, maybe some papers just to sketch out ideas. Ideally you want monitor speakers on floor stands so you can try out a few different placements. And then I've also got a measurement microphone so I can measure each of these placements, but you can just use a normal condenser if you don't have a proper measurement microphone. So this is my new studio. If you didn't see the last video about room choice, I recommend you go and check that out after you finish watching this. Because in this place, I was lucky enough to have a few rooms to choose from. So check out that video. Now that we're actually in this room though, it's time to test out some different speaker placements. So I'm gonna start by just running you through a few of my ideas for where I could put the speakers in this room. So here here I have a rough sketch of the room. We've got a rectangular room with a bay window. Now the first thing to consider when you're thinking about speaker placement is that in most situations it's better to have the speakers firing down the long wall. So we could place them here and here or here and here pointing inwards rather than here and here. Now there are a few reasons for this but the main one is that extending that back wall out is going to improve the frequency response and give you a flatter listening experience. Some people advocate listening across the long wall because then the side walls are further out which reduces side reflections from these walls which are a big issue. So if you're not going to add any treatment at all then you could try putting your speakers here and here so that these walls are further away, so the reflections from those walls are quieter. However, if you're gonna go through the effort of treating your room, then having your speakers here and here or here and here firing down the room is much better because you're moving that back wall further away. The side walls are then closer, but once you add treatment there to reduce those reflections, it's not gonna be as much of an issue. So I'm pretty set on the speakers being somewhere around here in the bay window, because then I can look out the window if I want to. The window is also gonna act as somewhat of a base trap. Glass windows are seen as a bad thing because they look like a highly reflective surface and they are reflective in the high frequencies, but in the low frequencies, they'll just pass straight through the window. So you lose all of the low end out of that window and the high frequencies that are reflected, well, by the time they've come out of the speakers and they're pointing this way, so the high frequencies are quite directional, so they come down here, they reflect off this wall, maybe then they bounce off this wall and eventually they get to the window. But by that point, they're so quiet, it doesn't matter. Low end, however, is omnidirectional. So if the speaker's here, it's gonna come out all around not just in this direction so it's going to come out from behind the speaker as well especially if they're rear ported but it's going to go straight out the window so we're going to lose a lot of that low end which is kind of what we want we want to trap that low end in a room rather than having it bouncing all over the place and really building up into strong room resonances so here and here is going to be my rough location now there are a few things i want to try in this area first of all i want to try semi-flush mounting the speakers and this is something that I only just found out about after doing some research online. But sometimes with bay windows, by putting the speakers in line with the window, ideally flush mounted like this, what you can actually do is get some of the benefits of flush mounting the speakers. So they'd be pointing out this way, the speaker comes there, and the sound comes out like that. Now, I'm not sure this is gonna work because the speakers are pointing down the room in order to be flush mounted rather than at the listener. So first of all, that's gonna probably mess with the stereo spread. And equally, I'm not sold that semi flush mounting them is gonna make that much of an improvement. And lastly, the speakers aren't gonna be, it's not gonna be possible to flush the speaker cone with the wall perfectly because they're square speakers. So I'll probably have to put them more like this. So there'll be a gap here between the, the speaker and the wall, so they won't be perfectly flushed. But we'll give it a go. So that's try number one. Now, the next thing I wanna try is similar. So right in this bay, up against the side wall, but angled at the listener. And the point that I've got marked here is 38% of the length of the room. Now, this is a kind of magic number. It's the best place to be theoretically in that area, around a third, most people say, but 38% is the exact number. Now, you definitely wanna avoid being halfway, which is probably around there or a bit over that side, because if you're 50%, you're gonna get a really strong buildup of resonances as they bounce off that back wall. And if you're sat here, you're gonna be right in a node of a certain frequency. So that's frequency is gonna sound really strong. So you wanna avoid that. So we've got our speaker position here and we'll try the same flush mounted, but this time just angled. 
So try and keep them as flush with the wall as possible, but this time actually pointing at the ideal listening position. Once I've done that, so that can be number two. Once we've tried that, I wanna try then just moving them out a bit so they're a bit further away from the side wall. So they're kind of just in the middle of the bay here. So similar distance from the back wall, but more of a distance from the side wall. Again, pointing at the speaker and we'll have to check that that still forms an equilateral triangle because ideally we want this to be a perfect triangle but we'll come back to that at the end so that can be three and then finally i want to try moving everything out of the bay so speakers probably still partially in the bay but more like this and we'll probably have to move this listening position back a bit so it'll probably be more like 40 percent something like that again pointing at the listener and that's going to be position four so the next thing to do is just test all of these positions, see how they sound, because in theory, this one should be worse because we're not listening at exactly 38%, but because they're out of the window, maybe that distance from the back wheel will improve the frequency response. It's hard to say, this is all just theory. So unless we actually go out and measure the frequency response of each of these positions, we're never gonna know for sure. So that's the next step. So I'm gonna start with the flush mounted speaker placement. See if I can get an interesting sound from flush mounting them as if they're in a fitted wall, but using the bay window as the flush area instead. Okay, so they're in roughly the right place. The next step is to actually mark on the floor where the ideal listening position is so that I can sit there. You can also see that I moved the desk forward to where it's actually gonna be, because I wanna take that into account as well and pretend it's gonna be the real setup. So if you've got a desk, make sure it's there. If you're gonna have stuff on the desk, you can even do that. I'm gonna put treatment on this desk later because I don't wanna get the loud reflections from the desk, but we'll test that again when it comes to acoustic treatment. So for this test, I'm just moving the desk a bit further into that bay where I'll actually be sitting, and I'm gonna mark on the floor where the best position is. So what you can do is mark that with a bit of tape, but I've actually got a small scuff on the floor just in the perfect front to back 38% and also perfectly in the middle of the room width wise. So I can use that as my point of reference, which is kind of handy. So now I'm gonna position the measurement microphone there and take a measurement with Rumi Q Wizard. Okay, so Rumi Q Wizard is set up. I'll make sure there's a link in the description below. My monitors are on. I just checked all the settings are set to zero or flat on the room adjustment. Sometimes on a lot of speakers, you can reduce the bass and stuff like that. That's all set to flat. They're plugged in, they're ready to go. So now I'm gonna take a measurement. And this is actually quite fun. So first we need to calibrate Rumi Q Wizard. So if you go to preferences, and first of all, we wanna check the levels. So use main speaker, test signal to check set levels. You're gonna need a sound pressure level measuring thing on your iPhone or Android. There's loads of free ones um, just to measure the volume in the room. And then we're gonna do check levels and we want this to be about 70, 75 dB in the listening location. Cool, that's about right. Pretty loud, but we wanna do it properly. So then we wanna calibrate. And this is where we actually calibrate the input microphone. So then we hit calibrate and this is gonna explain what we wanna do. The first stage, blah, blah, blah. And then... So the, input, so the input level is close to the output level, ideally within six dB. There you go. So you just adjust the input once you've done that, adjust the input on your microphone during the calibrate to make sure this is the right level. So we've done all the calibrations and it's gonna do a measurement. Now, I spoke during that, so it's not gonna work, and I actually wanna do a couple, uh, and then it will take an average. So instead, we're gonna go to measure. We're then gonna change the length to one, because that'll take a bit longer, and we're gonna do two sweeps, and it'll take an average of the two. So I'll fast forward this bit, but the same thing. We're gonna hear a sine sweep. It goes from all the way from zero hertz up to 20 kilohertz, and at every frequency, it's gonna measure the strength of that frequency, the volume of that frequency in your room, and also the reverb time of each frequency, which can be really handy too. So let's hit start measuring. Okay, so there we go, we've got our measurement. That went fine. If you find that it clips, then you just need to recalibrate, maybe turn down your monitors. Uh, but the end result is that we see something like this. This is a frequency response of my room. We've got some peaks, some really strong peaks here at about 45 hertz. We've got another peak here at about 85 hertz got a massive dip around 100 to about 110. A peak here at 131, and then more peaks and troughs. So these are gonna be the problem areas, 45 hertz, 80 hertz, and 130 hertz. Now, 
I'm gonna do the listening test next. So let's just pull up and we could do this fastidiously by using Flax, but I'm just gonna to go to Google Play and listen to something. So choose a track that you wanna use for every single test, something that you like the sound of. I quite like this track for, for checking monitors. And we're gonna use this as our reference in each position. And you also wanna make sure now your head is actually in the middle where you're gonna be listening. And let's see how it sounds. Sounds pretty good. Good center image, nice stereo. Where the issue with this placement is that the speakers aren't pointing at me because I need them to be flush. And also they're not perfectly flush because of the stands, I can't get them right up against the wall. You can see there's a gap there. And before I move on to the next position, I'm gonna start taking notes. So we'll call this position one, which was semi flush. Good stereo and center. Nice round, low end. Sounded pretty good, no major issues that I could hear. And now what I'm gonna do is repeat that process. You've seen me set everything up now. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other three positions, then come back, talk you through each of those, and then we've got a bit more tweaking to do once we've settled on our favorite of those four, and we'll also compare those frequency graphs. So keep watching. Okay, so I finished taking measurements, and now it's time to actually take a look and analyze which position was the best. So let's start with my subjective notes. Now, I'm gonna pretty much ignore these apart from one thing. The biggest difference that I noticed was between the first position where the speakers were semi-flushed and the speakers weren't angled at me, the stereo spread was just, it was okay. And when I first heard it, it seemed fine and that surprised me. But then when I changed it to that second position, which was the same placement, but the speakers angled inwards, suddenly the stereo spread became so much stronger. The center image was better. Panning, all of that stereo effect would be far easier um, to do. So that was one big difference that we can't see in the frequency graph that we needed that a music listening experience to find. But besides that, the things more related to tone and frequency, in the second position, it sounded like maybe there was a bit more low end, but then in the third position, there was maybe a bit more presence. In the fourth position, it started to sound a bit boxy, but honestly, I think that was just my ears tricking me because it wasn't a side-by-side -side comparison. I had a listen, I moved the speakers, I did the sweep, and then I had a listen, and the time between those two basically makes it redundant. So I'm gonna pretty much ignore those notes apart from the stereo spread. So for that reason, we can pretty much write off position one because the stereo spread was bad. Now, if position one, however, had a much better frequency curve, then sure, okay, maybe we can deal with a weak stereo spread. However, when we take a look at the frequency graph, that's really not the case. I think that was actually the worst. So what we're looking at here is the frequency response in each position. So it's just saying at this frequency, this is how loud it was. And we're focusing on this range between 32 to around 700. That's what I've got the zoom set to, so you can zoom in with these buttons. And I'm focusing on that range because to me, when it comes to treatment and speaker placement, this is the range that has the most variation. When we start to get into the upper mid range and the treble, there's just so much going on. Like look at all those dips and troughs and peaks. There's no way to really compare those colors, the different curves. However, in this range, which is really important when it comes to finding a good room, 30 hertz, that's our low end, up to here around 100 hertz and 200 hertz. And then beyond that, we've got our lower mids up to around 600. That's the really important range that we wanna be focusing on. So have a look at this. And what you're looking for is which curve seems the most consistent, has the least troughs or dips, the weakest dips and also has the weakest peaks. And that's gonna be the best position because we're gonna, what we're looking for is a more consistent level frequency curve where every frequency ideally would be exactly the same. Obviously that's never gonna be the case. So straight away, just from a quick look, I can already see that red is probably one of the worst because all of the peaks here are about the same and here, but then red has got this random dip here at 93 Hertz, which you can see on the bottom there and another dip here at 115. Uh, and then here it dips again, it's quite aggressive. And that was the first position, the semi-flush. So that whole idea of pseudo or semi-flush, in this case, didn't really work. Now the angled flush was very similar. So now we're comparing red, which was the semi-flush with blue, which was the same position, but angled inwards. Actually had a better frequency curve as well as better stereo spread. So not as much of a dip here, but pretty much all the same peaks and very similar. 
just less dips here in this 80 to 120 range. Then we had closer, which is where I moved the speakers a bit closer to the desk. I didn't actually move the desk, but I moved them further away from the window on the back and also on the side, so closer to the desk. And that got pretty good. These peaks are about the same. This dip, nowhere near as much here, at around a, just below 100 hertz, which is great, but we do have this huge dip here at 109. And then after that, um, more consistent here. So we don't have this dip that's apparent in the red and blue here at around 180, which is gonna be an important range. Equally here, there's another dip in the blue and red that we don't have in the purple, but we do have a new peak here um, with the blue and red and so on and so forth. And then finally, the last position, which is the one you're looking at right now, which is out of the bay. So I moved the speakers away from the bay windows about 60 centimeters from the side wall and I think almost a meter from the back wall, which in this case is a window. And here we have the best response by quite a bit. So this is the green line. So this peak, not as strong. This peak, about the same. We're gonna to have to address that with um, acoustic treatment and this one as well. But then here, we have very few peaks, none of these sudden peaks around 100 hertz. It's much smoother. We do have this peak here at 130, um, same dips, but then here it just stays more consistent where the other lines are going down and up and down. The green is going up and down, but not by as much. It just kind of stays along this line around 70 dB. So it's just more consistent. We do get more dips here, but just at a glance, green, the best one by quite a bit, which is this position, which is nice because now I don't have to move the speakers again. But it just goes to show you how valuable this is, because I would never have known that if I just listened to the different positions. You really need to take measurements like this. And again, if you don't have a measurement mic, Sono Works were really kind. Um, they sent me a kit to uh, measure and also treat this room with their EQ curves. They have Sono Works reference, which adjusts your monitors to your room, and this measurement came with it. Uh, came with it, so I'm using that. But if you just have a normal condenser, that's fine. So now the next step is we found the best position, but there are m a few more things we need to check before we settle on this as being the final speaker position. First of all, you wanna check that the speakers aren't the same distance from the side wall as the front wall. Now I'm gonna go through quite a few things here. So I put together a cheat sheet to actually help you remember all of these things and it's a checklist that you can run through and tick, okay, best floor position, okay, they're not equal from side wall, back wall. So make sure you download that, there's a link below, but now I'm just gonna quickly measure and check that distance isn't the same. Cool, so they're about 40 centimeters from the side wall and about 60 centimeters from the back wall. Not as far from the back wall as I thought when I said nearly a meter a second ago, uh, because the speakers are actually quite deep, but the actual speaker cone is probably about a meter from the wall, but the very back of the speaker casing is about 60, but that's fine. So 40, 60, nowhere near being similar. That's fine, we can tick that one off. So now the next thing we wanna check, again with the tape measure, is that the distance between the speakers and the listening position is equilateral. So, what I had to do here was move away from that 38% sweet spot. Obviously it didn't matter because we used a measurement mic and I'm still not halfway, so that's fine. I'm probably more like 40% or about that from the front wall. And it just goes to show you, you don't always have to follow these rules. The best thing you do is just test. Having said that, I still want to make sure that I am equilateral with the speakers themselves. So I'm going to measure the distance between the tweeters and the cones about kind of that center line and the listening position, which is now here, and I'll put the mic there as a point of reference, and we wanna make sure that those distances are all the same. Perfect, so this is the perfect listening location. So I'm gonna take a reference here. If you have a marking on the floor, you can use great. If not, I'm just gonna actually grab some tape and put an X on the floor where the ideal listening position is. Cool, so I've got my listening position marked and now it's easy to use that as a point of reference. The third thing you wanna check is that the speakers are at ear level. So if you've got floor stands, you just wanna adjust them, make sure that your ears roughly coincide with, I tend to just think of halfway between the tweeter and the, the big cone, but you could do the tweeter, some people use that, but you just wanna be roughly ear level when you're in your chair in the perfect position. And here, it's all good. They're at ear level, I don't need to make any adjustments. And then the fourth and final thing you wanna check is that the speakers are pointing at your ears perfectly. So we already compared this when we were doing the different listening positions, but now I just wanna fine tune it and make sure they're kind of perfectly pointing at my ears. So the point in my ears, I didn't have to adjust them up or down because sometimes you don't have a choice. You have to mount the speakers not at ear level. And in that case, you'd wanna, again, point them upward so they're still pointing at your ears. But in this case, they're at ear level, so I don't need to angle them up or down. Just had to angle them sideways a bit to make sure they're pointing perfectly at my ears. So that's it. We found the perfect place for our speakers. Didn't cost a thing. Took 
probably half an hour to do all of that and figure it out. You can do it much quicker once you know how to do it. And that you can see is already having a huge impact on the frequency response. We're gonna get a much flatter listening experience. And your mixes are gonna come out better. They're gonna translate better because you've got a flatter frequency response. So of course, now that we've got this to work with, the next step is acoustic treatment because there's no treatment in this room at the moment, which explains those huge peaks and dips. So in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through acoustic treatment. It's gonna be just as in depth and I'm gonna take you through every single step that I'm gonna go through to set up this studio and show you how to do the same. Now we covered a lot here. There's a lot of things to remember. So I thought the easiest way for you to actually do this and apply this is to use a checklist. So I put together a cheat sheet that takes you all of this. If you want notes so you can remember this and reference it in the future, next time you set up your studio, just as a recap, there's loads of notes in there. And then also in addition to that, you'll get a checklist so when you actually go through this process in your studio, you can tick these things off and make sure you've done absolutely everything that you need to do. So that's all from me. I'll see you in the next video of this how to build a home studio series. And remember, create regardless.